Yep. I agree. Cedric, did you want to chime in on what you'd look for in a coach for the first time around? You're muted, my friend. You have to unmute your, your phone there or your computer. Uh, um, I'll unmute. What would I, I would look for, um, well, since we have social media now, you can pretty much look, look at people from a distance. And you pretty much can observe, you know, the way they handle themselves and so forth. So, um, mm -hmm. I think there's more transparency today in business than it has ever been. Yep. And, um, you know, and, and I, that, 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 that subject matter about money came with, and, um, you know, I think 99% of people, well, I'll say 97% of the world has the wrong concept of you know what money really is and um yes i i really think that if you do something that you're passionate i mean money we, we bills you have your, your house notes you know the basic stuff and then you know so you need to have that baseline amount of income coming in yeah so if you have that part covered and you do something that you're passionate about and you become a master at it um, money is a byproduct, just like Earl Nightingale said. You know, yeah. most people walk up to the stove and uh, look at the stove and say, "Give me heat." Before they, they put any wood in, yep. yeah, they don't put any wood in. And uh, so, I think a lot of people think about, and I, you know, throughout the years, I've had to have a change of attitude when it comes to money. I was raised. Um, by my grandmother in the south that had a candy business so i was raised around an entrepreneurial grandmother right but it was uh primarily it was make the money stick it in your pocket and you go about your way and so there was no there was no count accountability when it came to money when the weekend came she gave me 40 50 bucks and i'm out you know mm -hmm. and um i, I didn't right. learn about investing i didn't I, you know and then you know the conversation was always about money because they didn't understand money had a business that i believe really could have been a multi-million dollar business but it's our our concept about money and you know how it works and um so getting back to the coach part you know it has to be somebody that's, that's passionate about what they're doing passionate about helping other people you know uh, uh um they're not looking for as i say vain glory vain glory they're not yep. looking to be that number one person that go-to person you know every industry has the superstars even in sports and crazy oh yeah oh um, but yeah. you have you have people that are the role players too yes and and they are integral part of making all this happen. And and I a lot of years throughout my life I thought about I want to be that big guy that you know everybody <laughs> bound down to. He's you know he, he he's the second coming and stuff like that. And it doesn't no, take I, no, I I don't want to be that person either. I don't want to be somebody that somebody uh, looks like bows down to i want somebody who wants to be on the same level right and i want to be on mm -hmm. the same level as them because that's humility and i think that when you're successful and when you have lots of money wealth and influence the most important thing in that process is for you to remain humble because if you're humble you're going to maintain that integrity with people right people yeah. are going to know that you can be approached no matter how successful you are that you're willing to talk to anybody and anybody from any walk of life anywhere at any given time in your career so i think that humility is vital when you get super successful so that people feel connected to you and they don't feel like they're lower than you because that's the last thing you want to do as an influencer is ever make people believe they're lower than you for right. any good reason at all right and, and here's here's one thing about um if a lot of people really think about it, uh, the reason why a lot of people are not successful on social media is because they're very they're unwilling to pick that phone up, make yeah. that, talk to that person. Yeah. Um, if if a person 
is is willing to to take what's online and transition it to offline you know with the individuals the people that can talk to sky's the limit the sky Absolutely. is it is because there's so many there's so many people not doing it no not enough of us anyway yeah it's, um, it's, it's a so it, you know as people are social i mean we're we're social you know we have to be around people we have to converse yes we, we have do. to know we have to know that people care we have to know that somebody doesn't mind picking up the phone reaching out yeah hey i agree so you know That's awesome. and then a coach those are the things that i would look for is that is that person that's willing to do those things mm -hmm. yeah it's interesting you were talking about like bowing down because most coaches aren't about trying to get people to bow down. They're trying to bring people up so they don't have to. When I look at someone like Tony Robbins or Les Brown, they're never saying, like, look up, I'm the greatest thing. Look up at me. Look at what I have. I mean, granted, yes, there are some coaches who will show you what they've accomplished material wise. And that's fine. <laughs> like Ty uh, Lopez. Ty Lopez doesn't. <laughs> but here's the thing. <sighs> I don't have a problem with that. The problem I have is it's hard to relate to them on an individual level it is. where yep. I'm at. When you just talk about material things, it gets difficult. But when I can talk to somebody, somebody like Jim Rohn was very approachable. Someone like Zig Ziglar, you just can talk to the person. They're not up here and you're down here. Yep, exactly. And really, in, when we first meet people in a coaching session, no matter what we get, no matter what we achieve, I, I'd, I'd still like, and I'm still going to be the same person. That way, people I, know they can I, come to me. I think a lot of that has to do with with with, with age and maturity. You know. Yes. Right. So, you know, it, you know, these guys got it going on, and um, you know, you. I don't hate on it at all. I, you know, really, I, I, my hats off to a person that can do all those things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, us too. Um, but you know, you, you can sit back and watch them grow too. Yeah. Um, hey. Fran, you raised your hand. Uh, what's up? And also, I want to say, hey, Marsha, what up? We're talking yeah, about... Yeah, Marsha's here. Yes. We're talking about how to have the best coaching session possible when you become a coach or if you're looking to become one. Yeah, I was going to say uh, accountability and structure that uh, for me getting a, a firm footing sometimes uh, you might be launching a new project or you just need some guidance uh, a sounding board somebody that's an objective uh, opinion and somebody to hold you accountable Ah, we talked about that. Didn't That's we? what Marsha yes. does with us. Actually, yes. Marsha is a coach. Oh, She's coached multiple <laughs> classes. So, yeah. interestingly enough, and we're just talking about the basics here. This is someone who doesn't know what he wants to do or she wants to do, and they come to you and say, I'm lost, I'm stuck in the woods, online and offline, and I'm looking at a million different programs, and I don't know what to do, and I don't know where I want my life to go. What, what, what does one do? at that point you know, just starting out as a kid entrepreneur well I think you folks have an interesting topic here uh, and I'm going to go back to one of the chapters in Pay Me What I'm Worth where Perfect. we actually were looking at what kind of traits do we like do we want to find in a mentor or a coach uh, and what skills do they have do they have the skills we want so it, just looking at that, there's a whole range of aspects you really want to look at because once you start understanding another person and you can help them take a look at their situation, take a look in the mirror and really reflect on where they're at, what do they want, where do they want to go, and really just point a direction for them that will help them. I think that's key for coaches to be able to do. And like Fran said, accountability. That's not an easy subject for a lot of people. Accountability. Yeah. And the, the, I, I think what it is is that a coach really 
wants to be able to, okay, I'll hold your hand, but at some point I have to let that hand go because you have to, you have to be able to see that the, that power is within you. You don't need to have anybody hold your hand after a while. You've yeah. taught them enough that they can take off with what they need to do.